Hello guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be looking at creating a few different variations of poster or ad artwork from the 80s era. These classic ads are iconic when you think of the big brands such as Nike, Apple and Porsche. I don't know about you guys, but I've recently been binge watching the latest series of Stranger Things, which is jam packed full of 80s references and design, which has got me in the mood to make today's video where we're gonna be looking at texture, layout and typography to achieve the same aesthetic on your own designs. So kicking off with the initial layout when we think about print advertising and editorial from this era we think of three main sort of artwork layouts so layout one uses a strong use of sans serif typography and bold images that sort of split the page and fluctuate up and down the page depending on how much copy they want to add so this style is synonymous with the early years of nike advertising which is probably where you would most recognize it from uh, but you can see some other examples on screen now you can see how the layout and composition is pretty similar but that image just fluctuates up and down the page to leave more or less space for the copy beneath. So the layout two is more of a text-led composition. Big, bold, condensed serif type faces along with some nice big cutout product imagery. This is a style we often associate with the early days of Apple and New Balance. So this can be altered slightly to create some of the classic Porsche ads, which have taken direct inspiration from the VW Beatles ads from the 60s. In an era where technology was sort of booming, this style sort of evokes the feeling of trust and quality, which is very important when you have so many competitive brands coming to the market and sort of fighting for attention. So you're probably already starting to see some similarities between the designs and layout free is sort of a combination of the two. You'll notice is that a lot of these designs have a single product focus and there's space left around the ad uh, for overlay typography. Sometimes you can see these sort of faded out to black or white or you know there's some sort of abstract gradient in there or abstract image. So you notice they're all very text-led and design programs were very new at this point. They only sort of came into play in the mid-70s uh, until the 80s when Apple Macintosh came out and sort of become a driving force for developers to make other programs. In the mid-80s, you saw things like PageMaker, Freehand, Illustrator, and then later down the line, you eventually got Photoshop. You'll also notice that the ads at this time were very product-centric. It was about cutting through the noise and basically telling your consumers why their product is good and what it can offer them and how it can improve their life. Very different to the way that advertising is done today day where the product is almost secondary and it's the primary focus is around telling a meaningful story about why your company is doing some sort of good aside from the product. So what I'm going to do now is create the first layout which is the Nike layout and once we've done this we can sort of look at how we can create variations of this to create the other two designs. Um, it's just a matter of composition and font changing. Um, once you've got the textures and that sort of process down you can go wild with it. So I'm going to start out by creating myself a new InDesign document and don't freak out if you want to do this purely in Photoshop you can. I just personally prefer to do anything layout based in InDesign and then drop it into Photoshop to apply the effects. I won't judge you, maybe a little bit. So I'm going to create myself a new document and I'm going to go down to the document setup. So I'm going to adjust the margin and I'm going to make it about six millimeters. The ads at this time sort of printed quite close to the edge of the page, quite a narrow margin. So yeah, six millimeters is good. And then we're going to want to set our layers up. So the way I'm going to do this is I want a layer just for my text and then I want a layer just for my images so I can apply different effects to different things. So I'm just going to create a text layer where all my text will sit and a new layer which will be images where all the images will sit. So now we're gonna to need to create a space for our image and these are very image heavy. So you can, like the layouts we mentioned earlier, decide how much of the page you wanna cover with the image. I'm just gonna put in a blue placeholder for now um, until I sort out the layout and then drop my image in afterwards. So I'm gonna bring mine down probably to about three quarters of the page, probably about here. So I'm gonna add in some big wide text box here uh, and I'm gonna drop in my headline. I'm gonna base this design on the new Nike Patter um, Air Max One design, because so I think they're really nice. So I'm gonna put in a headline that I saw for that. And we're gonna change that to Futura Extra Bold uh, Condensed. So we're gonna center align that, and I'm gonna make the text nice and big. I'm gonna drop it to a new line, and I'm gonna set the text to about 44, with the leading to about 38. And we wanna bring this nice and close together. So I'm gonna set the tracking to about minus 30 like so. So this is already starting to look like that classic iconic Nike headline. So the next thing we want to do is insert some of our body copy. So I can go ahead and create a text box and drag that across here. And this is another reason why I really like InDesign is because I can just go down to the bottom of my page, go to the text frame options and create you know, a three column text frame. And I'm gonna set it to five millimeters in between. So I'm now gonna fill this with some placeholder Lorem Ipsum. 
and I'm going to change the type to souvenir. From what I can see, this is probably one of the most popular used body copy fonts in this era. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger. I'm going to make this about 17. And I'm going to set the leading to about 16. Bring it again nice and close. I'm also going to bring the tracking down again and make that minus 20. So another thing we see which is quite common within these ads is adding a drop cap or adding an indent on the first line. So I can select my paragraph here, go down and on this first line I can add a 7mm indent like so. I'm actually going to remove some of this and bring it to about 4 lines and then I want to add just a little slightly bolder subline that's going to sit at the bottom. Maybe a bit too small, a bit bigger. And that's just going to sit on the bottom of my margin like so. Apologies if you can hear my MacBook struggling. Um, yeah, it's a tough time. Cool, so now our text is looking pretty good on the page. The layout is looking right. You can adjust this as much as you want. You know, change the space in between the headline and the image here um, and just have a little play around with it. Make sure it feels right. You don't have to stay too true to the original ad. You can play around with it and experiment just a little bit. So I'm pretty happy with where this is at the moment. So I'm going to drop in my images. So I've just dropped my image in. I'm using this sort of Nike image that I made as an example. Again, teasing the new release of the new Pata AMAX ones. I basically took one of the editorial shots, cut the guy out and dropped him onto a nice blue cloudy background. So I can just reposition this to where I want it. Just want to double check that all my text is on the text layer and my images on the image layer. Next thing I'm going to do is drop in my logo, which will sit in the top right hand of the page. And next what I want to add in is another sort of cut out product image in the bottom right of the page. So this is something that we see on a lot of these ads. You have maybe one main image and then you'll have like a product cut out at the bottom. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab that and drop that in. So as you can see, I've dropped that in, but at the moment, the text wrap isn't really working on this. It's just sat in front of the uh, in front of the text, which is not what you want. What you want is it to wrap around the image. Again, like you see with the classic ads. So what we can do for this, if your image is a cutout or it's on a plain background, you can actually add a text wrap, which will kind of mask the edge of the image and wrap around it rather than having just a straight edge. So we can do this by going to window text wrap. So we're going to want to press this little one here. Uh, and obviously it's just slid it off the side of the page there. Uh, we want to make sure that at this type here, we go down and we select detect edges. So this will do basically a little mask and it will wrap the text around the actual shape. And now when we look at the ad, it's starting to look a lot like what you think you'd see in the 80s. So what I'm going to do now is actually export this as two separate layers, as I mentioned before, one with the images on and one with the text on into a folder and then drop them both into Photoshop so I can edit them separately. At this point, if you've been working in Photoshop, obviously you don't have to do this step, but it's just for those who are choosing to work in InDesign. So just to export separately, I can just turn off my text, export this and go back in, turn off my images and export that. I'm just going to be exporting these as a print PDF. So I've just opened a new Photoshop document and what I can do now to place these PDFs and make sure they're in the right place is go to file, place linked and select my pages and drop them in. With this, you get the option to select the crop which you want to do to media box rather than bounding box, which will just crop to all the media, which you don't want to do. Like so. So again, we've got our two layers here, images and text. We can go down here and create ourselves solid color, which will act as our page color. Now over the years, it's not going to be perfectly crisp white anymore. Um, so you can go down to the yellow selection of color and sort of just bring it in a little bit. Depending on how aged you want it to look, I kind of want mine just as tad off white. I don't want it to be too sort of yellowed. So subtle, you kind of barely notice it, but you know it's there. One note actually, by doing this and having the placed images um, that are linked, so these images are actually linked when they're placed, if I want to make any changes to my InDesign document, I can just export it, overwrite it on my save, and it will just update in my Photoshop document. So first things first, I'm going to want to start off with my text. So the text here is obviously nice and pristine, which we don't really want. So what we can do is basically create, go to the adjustments layer, create threshold layer, and we can hide our images for the time being and sort of up this to roughen the edges a little bit. And what we can also do is select our typography layer, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and up this a little bit here to create a bit of an ink bleed. We don't want it too, you know, ink bled, but a little subtle ink bleed is always nice. Feel free to go back to the threshold and sort of adjust this as well. So a subtle ink bleed is good. And then with our typography layer selected, what we want to do is go to select color range and make sure the shadows are selected and press OK. 
and this is going to make a you know a selection of all of the black parts of this typography and then we can go down to this little circle here select this and press solid color uh, and set that to black and press ok drag that layer to the top and we can put the typography layer and the threshold layer in a folder and hide it so basically what we've done there is just created a black layer that we can then edit change color whatever we want and it's sort of an isolated text bled layer next thing i'm going to want to do is just roughen up those edges just a little bit more you can see there's a little bit of distortion but um, i'm going to right click and convert this to a smart object and then i'm going to go back up to filter distort and ripple so make sure you can actually see where your type is and if we zoom in obviously this is a little bit too extreme we want the size to be medium uh, it's more subtle you go to small it's obviously you know a bit more rough and rugged we want it, this to be really subtle so barely even noticeable but it just adds that little detail change that to 20. there you go super subtle but when you zoom in you can kind of see it in there so next thing to add is our images so I'm going to drag that to the top. So we're going to want to play with our image colors just a little bit. And I'm going to go to the adjustments layer here and create a curve. And what we're going to want to do is click in the middle, click down to the left, click up to the top right. And this allows us to create a little bit of a simple S curve that we can sort of play with the levels a bit. We're going to bring down the shadows here a little bit, bring the lights up a little bit up here. And then we only want to apply this really to our image. So if we right click on our layer, we can go down and create a clipping mask. And this is basically just going to clip to our uh, image layers. So we want to go to the adjustments again and go to the brightness and contrast. Click on that. I'm going to just up the brightness just a tad, just so it's a little bit overexposed. And then I'm going to bring the contrast down just a little bit uh, to about there. And again, right click and create clipping mask. Very subtle, but just, you know, building up these effects. So next, I'm going to create a hue and saturation level. And again, I'm just going to bring down the saturation just a little bit, just because you wouldn't be too bright. It's going to be washed out because it's print based. So I'm just bring that down just a tad. And I might even bring the lightness up just a little bit. So it has a bit more of a faded effect. Again, right click and create clipping mask. So you can see here, this is what it currently looks like. That was what it was like before and boom there. So when you zoom out, it's got a little bit more of a faded effect look on it and yeah. So what I'm gonna do now actually is just highlight all of these effects and my images, highlight them all like this, right click and convert them to a smart object. So what I'm gonna do next is try to achieve an offset printing effect. So offset printing is where CMYK plates are set up to print each color through different rollers. It's usually cheaper uh, when you do like sort of a high production amount, um, such as things like magazines. So this cheap, fast print, you know, on, on cheaper paper stock, it sort of comes with its defects, ink bleed, and sort of misregistration, which are all the small details that may help make our design feel a bit more retro and um, authentic to the era. So to do this, we can go to filter, pixelate and then color halftone. I want this to be as small as possible. So I'm just going to select four and then I want all my screen angles to be at 45 degrees. So press OK and you can see now it's created this overlaid color halftone. So when you zoom out, you can see there's a bit more texture and sort of grit and grain in the image. This is probably a little bit too intense though. Like I want it to be very subtle. We're not actually creating the, you know, the real thing. So I can double click on this little button here and it will allow me to sort of adjust the opacity uh, over the top of my image. So as mentioned, I just want it to be quite subtle. So I'm probably going to bring it down to about 35%. If you're up close, you can see it. Uh, and again, it's all about building up multiple layers to achieve the sort of realistic aesthetic. So that is the base of our design sort of edited. Now we need to get onto the overlays. Um, I want to add a little bit of a paper texture overlay and also a scanner overlay. Now with the scanner overlay, you obviously wouldn't see this on the actual print but what we see a lot of um, in today's age is all these ads have been rescanned and uploaded online so i'm just going to drop this texture in here and this texture is actually by bracken design i'll leave a link down below great texture packs and great actions obviously this is a, a paid for texture pack so i will also give um, links to free assets that you can use online if you don't want to pay for the more premium and higher quality assets then um, i will leave some options for you to achieve the same effects but with uh, free assets i'm doing god's work so then we're going to just want to play with the blending modes. Sort of achieve the effect that we want. I quite like the linear burn, but the opacity is too high. And just play with it as much as you want until you get the effect that you want to achieve. Zoom out so you can kind of see some of the textures coming through there a little bit to grain, which is nice. Might even add a little bit more, to be honest. And then the next thing I'm going to add is this sort of distorted scanner effect. Uh, and this is by Album Art Archive. I'll leave a link to the store down below as well for some great premium assets. But I'll also link down below some free versions if you don't want to pay for the more high quality and sort of premium assets. 
So again with this you can sort of change the blending modes here and the opacity to get your desired results. Different things will work better on different colours and that sort of thing so I like having a visible level of distortion um, from these overlays because again once you've you know ripped it out of the magazine it's been stored for 20 years you've scanned it and there's going to be a certain level of distortion along this time frame uh, which really adds to the character of the final design. Cool so I'll put my final design on screen now. The style two um, follows the same techniques, we just need to focus on the fonts and the composition. Again, looking at the Apple and New Balance examples that are on screen now, they are very headline text heavy and they have this isolated product photography. So you can see how this New Balance has the dominating headline and product images and one big column of text across the bottom. So we've got similar details such as the indent and the secondary image coming into play here, very much like our first design. And then we have the Apple design, same thing again, big image, big text, but this one it has has two centered columns and then the sort of product sitting within it. Very basic in terms of design and layout, super bold and super powerful for this era. So setting up this headline for the secondary route, I've gone for the ITC Garamond Condensed and I've used the book version because they just love the little condensed font in the 80s. So this is the font you think of when you think of these iconic Apple ads and the New Balance ads is this style of typeface. So we're going to want to use this as title case, so not uppercase, just capitals on the first letter of each word. So I've gone for 112 point on this headline. I've brought the tracking down to 85 point uh, and the leading is well down to minus 40 because on these headlines they're sort of a bit more condensed than the others and they overlap a little bit as well. So again with the body copy it's going to be the souvenir typeface but feel free to change up a little bit if you want. And I'm going to be using the same layout and text wrap techniques uh, to recreate this style again like the first one that we looked at where it sort of wraps around the image. Again I'm going to be making this for the new Pata and um, Air Max collab as they're paying and I want some. For these full page images when you bring it into Photoshop and they're sort of uh, fully white images I like to sort of add a bit more texture into them make them a little bit more yellow and you know because it's a nice light background you can see more of that texture coming through which I think is really nice. As I previously said many of these ads from this era are just slight variations from one another all following similar trends and all limited by you know the same things limited by the programs they had available. So for the third design you'll find it's just a combination of techniques that we've already looked at so feel free to you know pick whatever typefaces you want whether you want to go for the serif or the sign serif and the images that you want to use and apply those effects that we previously looked at just with a full bleed image. For this you're going to be placing typography into the space around the images and making sure that it is all legible. Again you can take your image, cut areas out on Photoshop, bring the layers back into uh, InDesign and sort of have that text wrap around if you want or you can just do that in InDesign. Just a note though that you may need to do some photoshopping on some of these images just to make sure that the product is the main focus. You may need to remove some like sort of messy parts in the corner of the image or lighten or darken areas of the image just so the overlay typography is legible. So here you can see on screen my free final designs in the three different layout styles from the 80s era. Also, one quick note for all of those who do actually watch Stranger Things, how weird is this ad? This is basically the premise to the whole new series. Quite cool though. If you have liked today's video, then drop it a little like, subscribe and comment as well. Let me know what you guys are working on as it really helps and supports the channel. And one last thing, if you do create anything and post it online, you know, following from today's video, then please feel free to tag me in it. I like to see what you guys are working on and I can share it on my story and that sort of thing. Anyway, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon with a new video. So yeah. See you in a bit.